In this tutorial, you will learn how to transform a very boring and dull shot into something more cinematic like this. We're going to take a look at three stages. First of all, we're going to start with some basic color corrections and take a look at what contrast actually is. Then have a look at color theory and how we can do grading. And finally, we'll have a look at some more advanced techniques like masking and blending to really make the difference. So let's get started. What's up guys, it's Jordi here for Cinecom.net and let's just dive right into it because as you can see it's a little long tutorial and that's because it exists out of three parts like you've heard me saying in the beginning. So we've got the original shot right here in the timeline. The very first thing that we want to do is add contrast to it. This here was shot very flat as you can see. For those who wonder, it was shot on the GH4 in the V-Lock profile. Now what you want to do to create that cinematic look is always make sure that you are shooting as flat as possible because you want to avoid having over or underexposed spots in your shot at any time. And with that I mean that, for example, here camera scarf. You want to make sure that that is exposed well, that this is not overexposed, but also here her coat, that these darker parts over here are not underexposed. And that is what really makes that film look. So in other words, if your shot wasn't exposed correctly, then it's really hard to get that cinematic look. So this shot here is perfect. So let's start with the contrast of this shot. I'm going to open up the Lumetri color panel here on the right side. If you can't see that, you can always head over to Window here on top and just select Lumetri and it should be somewhere right here. Click on that and that will open up this panel. That gives you several options to do the color corrections and we're going to start with basic color correction. And as you can see right here, we've got the contrast slider. But there are a lot more tools like the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks and all of these controls right here are going to help you with setting that contrast. Now there's a very big difference between contrast and cinematic contrast. Now to explain that I'm going to go to this image right here first. And this will allow me to explain these controls here a bit further. As you can see we've got a highlights slider, we've got a white slider, then we've got a shadows and a blacks slider. Now all of these are different. You might think, well, the highlights and the whites aren't that the same. Well, not exactly. And I can visually show you exactly what I do by opening up the Lumetri scopes. Again, this window can be found from your window menu here on top, the Lumetri scopes right here. Now you want to make sure that you are in the waveform view. And you can change to that from this little icon here, this little tool, by clicking on that and then just select waveform RGB. Now I'm not going to go too deep into this, that's a different story, we're just going to color grade without these scopes for now. But basically what this represents is how much exposed each part is in your shot. And you can clearly see all of these steps right here that come back in this image over here. So that means the white area is here on top, which is at 100%. And then the black area is all the way here on the right side, which is at 0%. And everything else sits in between. So that means if I'm going to increase, for example, the exposure of this shot, you will see that all of these steps also increase in exposure. And if I will lower that, the other thing will happen, of course. You can, by the way, always double click on any of these controls to reset that value. Now let me show you the difference between the shadows and the blacks. The shadows work a bit more underneath the blacks, and they will usually also take a lot more of the middle tones, which lay here around the 50%. If I'm going to increase that shadow slider, or just move it up and down, you will see that these three spots are going up and down, as well as this spot over here, which represents already the second rectangle here. So the shadows are going to work more here on this area, as I'm moving this up and down. Now let's see what happens when I'm going to move the blacks up and down. You will see that the more darker spots are affected now, and the one here on top, the more brighter spots, a lot less. So the blacks are going to work more here in the right side, the real blacks, as the shadows, like the name says, are going to work more on those shadows instead of the real blacks. Now the whites and the highlights work exactly the same. The whites sit here more on the left side, while the highlights here sit more on the middle left side. So now that we know how this works, we know how to do it as well on the actual clip. And I'm just going to close the Lumetri scopes, because like I said before, that's a whole different chapter. So with your clip selected, the very first thing that I want to do is actually add a bit more contrast with this contrast slider. And that's because it was just shot very flat. So we're going to have to add a lot of contrast to make it look natural. Then the next thing that I want to do is 
crush those blacks, but make sure that we are not going to underexpose anything. So make sure to look at the code here of Kim. And the same thing is going to happen for the whites. Also increase that. That will give us a really nice contrast. But as we're doing this, be careful though that you're not going to make those brighter spots flat. And the same thing goes for the dark spots as well. So what I usually do to preserve those details is increase the shadows, but decrease the blacks. And that will really make sure to have a nice contrast. And that's the difference between a more video-ish contrast and a film look or cinematic contrast. Always preserve those details. The same thing goes for the highlights here as well. Bring that down. As you can look here, her scarf is starting to look a bit more natural as we're doing this. But we're still keeping that punch as we're increasing the whites and the blacks, which are laying more on the outer sides of the exposure spectrum. Now, finally, if it's necessary, you might want to increase the exposure as well. But as you're doing this, know that you are making it flatter too. So then again, you have to add some more contrast. And you can do that by either working on those blacks or just moving that overall contrast slider. But be careful, though, with this overall contrast slider. Again, only do that if your shots are very flat. All right, so that was the very first part on how to add more cinematic contrast to your shot. The next step is going to be the grading. We're going to work with actual colors now. And the first thing might be the saturation. Now, this is always the second step, because if you are going to change the contrast, also the saturation will be affected. So that's why we're going to do the saturation after the contrast. So let me just increase that a tiny bit, not too much. Not really a big fan of adding too much saturation. It's not really that filmic. So perhaps you might want to decrease that depending on your shot. Once you're satisfied and there are some colors in your shot, we're going to head over to the color wheels inside Lumetri. And here is where that magic is going to happen. We're going to create even more contrast with these controls. But it's going to be a different kind of contrast. We're talking about color contrast. Now, I do have to mention here, when we talk about color grading, adding a certain look and feel into your shot for any project or for any personal preference, that is going to be different, of course. I just want to show you one of the very basics, and that is color contrast. But there are, of course, many other techniques. But I believe that this is considered one of the more basics one in color grading to get that cinematic look. So we see these three levels here, the shadows, midtones, and highlights. We've seen before what exactly that they are. For the shadows, what I'm going to do is add some blue into this. And the reason for it is that the color blue fits more towards darkness, to night scenes, to anything that is kind of bad, something that we want to stay away from. And I'm really saying it a bit more exaggerated, but uh, that's what fits with shadows. So let me just bring that midpoint to the blue side, like that. And right away, you will see that the image looks way too blue. So we're going to lift that up with the midtones, and we're going to work on the other side, and that's what I mean with color contrast. We're going to make two opposite colors. As you can see, they lay on the opposite side of each other. So let me just add that orange into it. And you want to take a look at the skin tones in this shot here. Make sure that they look natural, that it's not magenta nor green. We want to add nice skin tones, something like this. And finally, and this is the last step with the highlights, we've been shifting these colors here, blue and yellow. But something very important is that you have to look at your whites at any time. And in this case, that skims her scarf. So if her scarf now is starting to look yellowish or the sky here on top, because we've changed that in the midtones, make sure to bring that back to white. And we can do that by bringing this to the opposite side. Now, in this case, it's all pretty okay. But you might want to bring the highlights a bit more to the blue side here if necessary to make those white area real white. Now let's have a look at the before and the after, and you can see that we've already done a pretty damn good job here. We've got a rich contrast, and that's basically just done by adding two different colors in the shadows and in the midtones. Now these were the more basic tips. Now definitely stay tuned here after the break. We're going to take a look at some more advanced tricks, and that is really going to make the difference and make those shots pop like in those cinematic films. Compile your perfect soundtrack with Premium Beats' library of exceptional royalty-free music. All tracks are copyrighted clear, and their simple comprehensive licenses let you use each track as many times in as many projects as you want. Check the link in the description for more or head straight to premiumbeat.com to find the track you need. Hey folks, welcome back. 
So the next thing that we want to do is make sure that Kim is going to pop out in this scene. We want to draw attention to the subject. So what we are going to do is lift up those highlights even more to make it real pop. Now to work specifically on your subject, we have to actually cut her out and create a mask. To do that, simply select your clip, hold down the ALT key on your keyboard and drag that clip to channel number 2. And that will make a duplication of it, but also it will duplicate the gradings that we have done prior. Now let me head over to the effects controls here on top, and from the opacity over here, we're going to locate the pen tool. This here is going to allow us to create a mask around Kim. Now very important is that you are going to start in the beginning of this clip. Let me take the pen tool here, that allows me to create multiple points around Kim and connect these lines. Now it's not that important if your mask isn't done so correctly. You can go pretty rough over this and you will see in just a minute why that is. Something like this and I'm going to set this for a moment to 25% because very important here is that you are going to go outside of the canvas because else you might see a little line here on the bottom. There we go. Now this mask has to move also together with Kim. So we are going to track that and that's why you have to be in the beginning of this clip. Just press the play button here under mask path, the mask that you've just created and that will start creating keyframes as you see and it will track that together with Kim. And if everything goes well, that mask should stay on her. If something goes wrong, just hit that stop button and adjust where needed. All right, so tracking has been done and as you can see, the mask followed her pretty good. If I'm going to disable here the layer below Kim, you will see how the mask actually works. So we've got her isolated right now and that is perfect because what we want to do now on Kim here is make her pop even more. I'm going to go into the basic color corrections and there are different things that we can do. For example, we can increase the exposure if you like so that will brighten her up a little bit more, making her stand out a bit more but we can also work on the contrasts. For example, here on the whites, I'm just going to increase that even more to make her scarf pop out. But again, make sure that you are not going to overexpose this. Perhaps a bit more contrast as well. Bring down those blacks. So as you can see, there's a lot of contrast now on Kim. And if you are going to take a look at the before and the after, you can see what that does to her and how that makes her pop out from the background. And by selecting and treating these different parts, you can really guide the viewer to those spots. Now, very important as well, if your mask is getting visible, make sure to feather that as well. So in your effects controls here, underneath your mask, you will see a feather option. Make sure to increase that a little bit so that you won't see that there's any mask here. Basically, at any cost, you want to avoid that people notice your color gradings. So if your mask is visible, then perhaps change something in here. Just never do anything drastic in here. That's something that you should have done in your original clip here down below. All right, we're going to create another mask. Skin tones is something very important. When you get your skin tones right, you got awesome footage. So again, I'm going to grab the layer on top here on which we've just added that more contrast with that mask here as well. And I'm going to duplicate that again by holding down the Alt key on my keyboard, drag that to channel number three. Now it has copied everything, so I'm going to delete the mask around Kim first because now I wanna work specifically on her face. So again, grab that pen tool here and I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit more on Kim, something like this, and just draw a path around her face. Make sure to only select the skin tones, and usually that's also the neck of the person, like here. Again, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but you do want to do your best as quickly as possible. There we go. We've got it selected. We are in the beginning of the clip. Hit that play button, and that will track it again. If your tracking goes wrong, press that stop button to adjust, but don't mind it too much. As you can see here, we are a bit on the line of Kim or face, but uh, that doesn't really matter that much. There we go. We've got her face isolated right now. The tracking went pretty well, and here comes the magic now. We're going to add a bit more warmth into Kim, her face. We can do that with the temperature slider. Now, this is something that you shouldn't do on the overall image, because that is really going to push that yellowish color in every tone, in the highlights, in the blacks, in the shadows, everywhere. So, so that's why I'm always very careful with this temperature slider. But it does work great on skin tones, as you can see. That really makes her pop out. You can also work with the saturation here. And what also works very well is just adding more contrast. As you see, we are adding different layers of contrast, where the background has the littlest contrast, her body a bit more, and her face gets the most contrast. That really makes her pop out and pull the viewer towards her. Another great setting is when you go into the creative tab here is to increase the sharpness to make her face more sharpened 
and I'm doing that specifically on her face because real sharp footage isn't considered that cinematic. So you want to be careful with this slider here as well. If you are going to use that, make sure to use that on specific points because you don't want to sharpen stuff that is out of focus like the background here. So once that is done, again, make sure to perhaps increase the feather a bit more of that mask if that is necessary. So have a look at this here. She looks great. Let me just show you the before and the after of those skin tones. Isn't that awesome? All right, we are almost through it. We are done with color grading Kim, but there is a bit more that we can do about the environment, again, to pull the attention towards her. The scene is still pretty dull, and that's because we don't really have much colors here in the background and so on. So what I'm gonna do here is create a custom lens flare. We've got this highlight here on top, and that is great. We're going to use that to create some sort of a sun that is casting light on Kim. And to do that, I'm going to create a new solid. You can do that here from the bottom below from your project panel. Click on that and select the color mat from here. Press OK. And we're going to select a very orangey color mat, something like this. Press OK. And uh, you just give that any name, for example, the sun. Press OK. And drag that layer on top of everything. And we're going to create a mask on this sun. I'm going to just set the scale here for a moment to 25%. And I'm going to disable that layer too, so that I can see where I am drawing this. Make sure that you have that layer selected. Even if it's disabled, you can still work on that. I'm going to grab the pen tool under the opacity, and I'm going to draw a quick triangle, something like this. I'm going to enable that layer again, so that I can see what I'm doing. And what you want to do now is increase that feather a lot, but really a lot, something like this. Now it doesn't look right yet, and that's because we have to blend this layer too. Under the opacity here, we can find the blend mode. Click on that, that allows you to select from different blend modes. We can choose something like an ad, which is very strong, or like a screen, which is more softer, but I've seen that it works best with the color Dodge over here. That will blow out these highlights just a tiny bit, which makes it look more like the sun is there. Now, of course, the effect is a bit too much at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just bring down the opacity and you just wanna add like this, a tiny bit of warmth coming through these trees, something around 24% looks already pretty good, as you can see. And since this mask is feathered so much, we don't have to track that or animate it. Perhaps if you are panning a lot, you might wanna play with the position as well, keyframe that too. But if you have like this very slow handheld shot, then you don't have to do that. This looks pretty awesome. And then there's one last thing that we have to do. We're almost there, guys, so stay with me here. You are seeing a lot today. I'm going to grab the clip here down below where we had the original grading or color correction on and hold down my Alt key to make a duplication again. And we're going to drag that to channel number five. Now also in here, we're going to create a mask again. So select that layer, head over to the opacity, grab your pen tool, and again, we're going to cut out a corner from this clip, something like this. Since we've got this part here isolated, what we can do now is go into the basic color correction and bring down that exposure a tiny bit. Not too much, just a very tiny bit. And what you also want to do, perhaps, is add a bit more bluish into that. See what we are doing here again. We're adding yellow or orange to the left side and blue to more darkness to the right side. Again, here we have that color contrast. We're making this side a bit darker to pull the attention towards Kim who's a lot brighter in this shot. Now, as we're doing this, make sure to increase that mask feather like a lot, something like this. And voila, here we have it, the epic cinematic color grading. As you can see, it's a lot of work. I must be honest, I don't always do these maskings myself, only with bigger projects. So it's something that you have to consider yourself. Are you only going to add some basic contrast or do some basic color grading by adding blue into the shadows and more warmth into the midtones? Or are you going to take it to the next level and also create multiple layers, multiple masks to work specifically on certain points? If you like, you can also download this project file so that you can practice these techniques on the same clip that was used in this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe because we're putting out two videos a week. Make sure to thumbs up this video if you liked it as well. And as always, stay creative.